Welcome, welcome. Welcome, everybody, to Zion Capital FX. My name is Chance, and um, it's, a, it's a real early day for me. It is currently 3.39 a.m. where I'm at. Um, taking a look at London session. Um, waiting for a trade to possibly fall on my lap. Uh, but until then, let's talk about TradingView. That's what this video will be about, how to set up TradingView. You got it downloaded on your computer or on your uh, mobile app. Now let's talk about all the functions that TradingView offers and how to utilize the program itself. So once you've got TradingView, it's going to look a lot like this. Now, for whatever reason, TradingView as a default setting comes with this uh, white chart, green bullish candles. Here are your bullish candles, candles that are going in the up direction, and red candles, candles going in the down direction. And then down here at the bottom is the volume uh, histogram. So for every uh, candle it aligns so this bearish candle this is the volume bar for that candle all this represents is the the amount of volume of uh, trading um, going on in that candle in that time frame that's all that represents so you can see that there is low volume uh this is around midnight, one o'clock, there was a little volume. And then as we were nearing the opening of London session, it started picking up, right? It started getting larger. And then you can see that also represented in the uh, the the growth of the expansions between candles from, from this swing high to the swing low and so on and so on. Anyway, that's more technical analysis. We'll get into that later. Let's just talk about the function of TradingView and how to use it. So when you when you've got it, it'll look something like this. Like I said, TradingView really likes these bright white charts. Personally, they uh, they burn my retinas. So the first thing I like to do is change the color on it. Um, but before we do that, let's just take a look at what we got here. We've got uh, time frames right here intervals so for right now we're on the one minute chart so for every candle you see on this chart that is a representation of one minute um here's the countdown timer to further illustrate that if i were to change it to a five minute chart now every candle is a representation of five minutes of price action so this candle is five minutes this candle is five minutes and so on and so on and so on Okay, these are my favorite time intervals. You can change these with the drop down. And you have all these times. You might not have all these times available to you because this is my my account. This is a paid uh, subscription level. So I can't really remember what's on the free account. But that's how you go through them. And then you can star them. And then they, they're added to your favorites. And then they stay up here on this toolbar. Uh, here, I forgot to mention, we're looking at the British pound to US dollar and you can change that by clicking on that. And then you can look up any, any sort of pair. We'll look up Euro USD. <clears throat> um, when you're on your watch list, so this is Euro USD, but you're like, well, okay, well, which one do I pick? Well, over here to the right, these are all the different feeds. These are different representations or interpretations of price for Euro USD. What you need to do is you need to look at your broker and see which feed closely aligns or um, is compatible with your broker's feed, right? So um, I trade my Forex funds. So I know that capital.com closely aligns with the same interpretation as my Forex funds has for price. So I'm going to look at that feed 
Um, I'm not going to look at forex.com because maybe some of the ticks are different on that feed and price doesn't look, uh, isn't as, um, isn't, is a less of a mirror image, right? So if this closely aligns or looks more like a mirror image to my broker, I'm going to use this as opposed to something that might look totally different. So it's, you'd be surprised. You're like, well, how different can it be? Well, um, you know, for guys that scalp, you know, real, real short trades in and out, the difference might be two or three spreads or two or three points for a spread that make all that might make all the difference in the world for them. So something to, to keep an eye out. That's, that's something for you to, to look into. Um, and we'll, we'll get deeper into that when we start talking about brokers. Uh, let's see here. You got price on the scale right here. So right now, um, for every dollar, that is 1.2156 uh, British pounds. Uh, let's see what else we got time here. This is the time on this scale. You come over to your watch list on this corner, on this pane. You can flip through all the different uh, assets on your watch list. You can add to your watch list by this plus button. It's It's the same as coming over here. Right, but instead it adds it to your watch list on here. Uh, a, a quick um, requisition to get to the asset that you want. And you can edit this. You can delete assets by this X button, add them, so on and so forth. Uh, when you first start trading view, you'll get a bunch of uh, stocks like Apple and all kinds of other things. <clears throat> excuse me hmm. and um, you can change that here if you come down here currently I'm on NASDAQ US 100 and this is sort of like a snapshot of technicals and news here's um, the latest news report that TradingView has for NASDAQ and let's see It looks like that's all there is for that. But let's go to uh, GJ. And they've got a little bit more that you can look at. They're suggesting strong buys from their technical standpoint. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sorry about that. Um, and you can take a look at more technicals. And it gives you all this, uh, all this information, right? So a lot of people don't realize that TradingView gives us a bunch of information at our disposal. It's just whether or not you use it and interpret it for your strategy or your edge. I think it's pretty interesting. Uh, myself, um, trading view, trading view is a vast tool that barely gets tapped into by the majority of people. So I can toggle this pane here um, with this icon. I can go to like a, a fuller screen um, when I set alerts, they will be stored here to set an alert. You go to your chart, and there's this plus button right here. You can click that, and you can add alert so that when price um, reaches or crosses this level on GJ, the British pound of Japanese yen, when it crosses that orange line, it will send me a push notification on my phone. Um, it will send me an alert on my desktop. I'm going to go ahead and delete that. I don't need that. <clears throat> there's that this is the data window so you get all your open high low close change the volume all of that some people really really look, pay attention to this um, and there's all kinds of stuff uh, on here that you can look at uh, something really handy would be the object tree a lot of people don't know about this but the object tree is, is this icon right here all the way to the right. You click on that, <clears throat> and uh, it'll have a, a running list of all the things that you have on your chart, and you can edit them, add them, delete them from your object tree. It's really, really handy when you start getting, when you start using the tools in TradingView. Uh, I go to the object tree quite a bit, 
and uh, uh, modify my charts from there. Uh, so let's let's talk about modifying the chart. <clears throat> Sorry, it's early in the morning and I'm fighting drainage and coughing and sneezing and all that. It's a bad time of year for me for allergies. Anyway, I digress. Uh, let's take a look here. To uh, like I said, these this bright white chart color burns my retina. So the first thing I do is I change the colors of the chart. To do that, you can go to settings. I, I right clicked and I went to settings, and here you can change the um, that symbol. You can change the color for your your bullish candles. We'll do this gray that took care of the borders or the body. Here's the borders and the wicks. And then you can see this changing on the chart, right? So um, we'll change the bearish colors to this dark gray. Um, you might be asking, why are you, why are you changing it to uh, like a, a light gray and a dark gray? Well, <clears throat> at an early age, it's, it's pretty simple. It's all psych psychological. At an early age, we're told... You know, we we associate the color red with stop, hot, um, just these things that might have a negative connotation with them. So, um, reason I change them is because when I first started trading, I realized that I might be in a long, so I'm wanting the trade to go up in my direction, and uh, but as soon as it started going down, I started seeing red candles. I would start to freak out. I start to get on edge and just like high anxiety. And then I realized um, it was the color that was bothering me. Uh, I, I was my, I was telling my brain I want to see green candles. So as soon as I started seeing red candles, I would start flipping out. You know, you're ingrained from uh, from an early age. Uh, red is red is hot red is bad you know whatever the case may be i hope i'm hope i'm making the point is uh you know try to try to detach you know um biases that you might have that were ingrained in you to trade in because there's a lot trading will will um uh, it will just <clears throat> It will find the chink in your armor psychologically. I'm just, I'm just gonna put it to you that way. Uh, if there's a fault or a flaw in your personality, um, trading is a great way of of finding that fault and flaw and then magnifying that. So if there's any sort of weakness, mental weakness, um, I guarantee you, trading is gonna find it for you. Uh, but anyway, so. I changed the color of the candles. You can see here. Uh, let's see. Status line. So the title. You'll see the title right here. I'm going to click that. I think that just clutters the chart. Open market status, which is this green indication. I'm going to get rid of that. The open high, low, close values. I really don't need that. I'm going to get rid of that. The bar change values. I don't need that. Uh, I'll leave the indicator titles on. I don't need the arguments or the values. Um, background. I can't remember which one that controls, but anyway, now we go to our scales. These are the scales down here. I'm going to change these. Um, symbol last price. I don't want that. Indicators, financial values. I uh, don't really need that. Well, I'll leave that on there. Uh, countdown. I do like the countdown. I do like having the plus button. Days of week on labels. Yep, absolutely. Let's see here. Appearance. Um, I get rid of those vertical and horizontal lines. I just make them invisible by the opacity. You'll see those lines disappear, and then you'll get a blank slate for the background. Crosshair, you see how the crosshair on my mouse, it's dashed. I like making that a solid line. That way I can 
put the let's say I put the mouse here and then it gives me a horizontal line and I can take a look to see if that's you know an area of resistance maybe or support um let's see here uh scale so the text on the scale um I'm going to change that to white. You're going to see that disappear and you'll be like, oh, what the heck? And um, that's only because I'm going to go to uh, the background real quick. And I'm going to turn that into a uh, black color. And then now, because I made the, the <clears throat> numbers on the scale is white, now you can see them better. And let's see trading we don't need these buy or sell and spreads so we'll get rid of that i want to get my chart as clean as possible and I, i'm pretty happy with that now to finish the look i'm going to go to this right here i'm going to change the theme the color theme right now it's set to light i'm going to set it to dark and oh man that is so much nicer so much nicer and i'm going to get rid of volume so your indicators will come up here and you can, this I button, if you click on it, it'll disappear, but it's still on your chart like that. Or you can change the settings. You can change the appearance of the, the candles. So I might change the bullish candles to match my candles on my chart. And I'll match the bearish candles, whatever the case may be. Um, you can change the inputs, all that. But I don't need it, so I'm going to get rid of it. So I'm going to hit that X. And now we've got a, a decent looking chart, right? Uh, so that's a way to customize your chart. I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to go back to one of my charts. I'm going to close without saving. All right. And now here, here you have a snippet of one of my charts. Uh, oh, man, look at that. I was anticipating NAS to go down. I was just waiting for structure to tell me so. So I was waiting for a retracement. It it bounced off the 786 level and it's starting to come back down. Um, it's all about anticipating being reactive to the market and having a plan. Uh, still a no trade because it's failing to break structure. So um Still waiting for that trade to play out in my eyes. As of yet, no trade still. Anyway, let's uh, come over here. These are uh, all the tools that I use on TradingView uh, on a regular basis. And I've got and to, to basically get tools. You always, uh, all these tools on the left-hand side like here's trend lines. If you click on this drop down arrow, it gives you all different kinds of um, tools within that category. You'll see all the ones that I have starred. I've got trend line, I've got arrow, horizontal line, horizontal ray, vertical line, anchored VWAP, and just so on and so on. So I'm gonna click the star button and I'll show you all the tools that I use. Horizontal ray, I click on it and I'll come up here, let's say at this candle, if I see a level of um, resistance, like right here, I'll click that and then it shoots that line all the way across. And then it gives me an idea what I'm looking at. Um, some people put, will put a horizontal array and like say it'll be monthly support or monthly resistance. Um, or you can do a horizontal line like this, right? Um, here's a trend line. You can, um, let's say if you want to follow the trend of price, you can do this, you know, and, and say you're waiting for price to come to this point and reject off that trend line. And you might enter a, a short there. However, you, you decided you want to trade it a little cheat. I use trend lines a lot to signify uh, break of structures and change of characters. And uh, if you hold the shift button down on your keyboard, it'll straight make your, your trend line perfectly square. So it's, so it's, it's not like you're trying to, uh, 
let's see. It's not like you're trying to do this by hand and make it square. You just hit shift and it does it for you. Little little neat fit feature. Also, you can customize these. All you gotta do is click on them, and then another menu will drop. And maybe you want to change the color. You can do that. Maybe you want to change the thickness of the trend line. This right here, maybe to four times to change the thickness, so on and so forth. There's a lot of things you can do here. What's another one? A vertical line. So sometimes when I'm uh, journaling my trades, after I make a trade, I'll journal it. I'll put it in a journal. That way I can review it um, uh, later on in the future. But what I like to do is I like to put vertical lines on the candle that I entered the trade in. So it's very clear and concise. I know the time. Uh, down here of when I entered a trade. Um, that's another handy one. This is path. This is a cool one. Like I can click now, click, 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 and double click and it ends it. I like that to uh, when I'm wanting to show somebody structure, like here, uh, price. Made structure going down, came up, failed to make a lower low, but did make a, um, but did break structure right here, right? So it broke that high right there, that lower high, and made a higher high. And some people might have taken that as, oh, price is going bullish from that point, but we never got a confirmation of that, and that. That's something I'll talk about later. Um, let me get rid of these, all this stuff. Uh, all you gotta do is click on it, hit the backspace button and delete it. Um, I'm just giving you an idea of all the things that you can do on a chart. Uh, rectangle, I use these a lot to signify areas of supply and areas of demand. And then you can change the color. You can even add in, uh, you can add in text. Um, I have templates, so all my templates get saved here, and I can, uh, you know, let's see, uh, let's say this was a one-hour demand on a, on an hourly time frame. I've got a title there, so I know exactly what this box is. Uh, just stuff like that. Uh, let's see, is this the highlighter? Yeah, this is the highlighter. Some people use this to map out structure. It's a cleaner way of mapping out uh, certain points of structure. I like this tool because um, you can follow along for uh, videos of sake. Or I'm looking, I'm looking at this this uh, swing high, this low, this lower high, now this lower uh, floating low. You know, that's a that's a handy tool to have. I right-clicked it and it disappeared. Here's the paintbrush. You, you never know what you might need that for. Um, this is the elliptical tool. That's a that's a pretty handy tool. So like if I'm in a, a lower time frame chart and I want to see what this is represented on a on a bigger bigger chart but don't necessarily want to try to hunt for that location specifically again i'll go to a higher time frame chart and then boom that's that's that area or maybe you know i'm on a higher time frame chart and i want to take a look at this area right here specifically on a lower time frame i'll jump to a lower time frame there it is it's easier on the eyes you know it's all about making it easier for you getting the right information let me get rid of this stuff um this is a fib retracement tool which you already see right here all this is a retracement measurement tool it's um it's a tool it's not a strategy some people make fibonacci their strategy it is incorporated in my strategy but um you got to know how to use it. And we'll talk about Fibonacci's uh, later on. Uh, let's see here. What else we got? 
this is the lawn position tool. So if I were to want to get into a lawn trade, um, this is how I map out my trade on trading view. Let's say mm -hmm. I'm going for a one to four and a half trade. So all that means is I'm going to risk 1%, this 1% being represented right here in hopes to gain four and a half percent. Obviously, if I were to, you know, in real time, if I was to take that trade, it was a winning trade. Um, but so my stop loss would be right here. This is the point of entry in my trade. And this is my take profit. This is where I wanted price to go. And then I can do the same thing for a, a short position, right? Set my stop above the structural high. Aim for the moving average. I'm risking 1% and hopes to gain 5.32%. <laughs> I use these tools. So when I'm mapping on a trade, I'll, I'll figure out how big my stop loss is going to be. And I figure out my lot size for my trade. I'll enter it in MetaTrader. And then once I'm in my trade in MetaTrader, I'll move this position tool to closely reflect to the price I got in at uh, on MetaTrader. And, and I'll just mirror this position tool as to how I have my trade entered in MetaTrader. And then I'll just monitor my trade on the chart and um, might close out early, might, might modify the trade on MetaTrader. And if I do, I, I modify the position tool on TradingView and I just watch the trade uh, play out. So that's... That is the short position tool on my favorites toolbar, or it's the long position. If you want to write something like text, uh, you know, trading view tutorial. Okay, boom, it's there. Um, and you can change the font size, all that jazz. Uh, Anchor VWAP. Um, you probably wonder what the hell is a VWAP. Sounds like a song. Um, it's volume weighted average price, and all it is is a dynamic uh, interpretation of support and resistance and average price. So we'll talk about that later on as well. I've got projection. I don't necessarily use that too much. Forecast. Um, if I'm going to, um, if I'm doing research and homework and I'm trying to figure out, okay, I, I see if price reaches here, I anticipate it to come down here. You know, this is just a, a tool that I use for research, the, the forecast tool. It's not, nothing really that you're probably going to mess with. The GAN box, I use GAN boxes a lot. They're another form of a retracement tool. Um, so I have my game box uh, set up. Um, let's let's go to a different chart, and I will show you how I use a game box. We'll go to GU. Um, zoom in here. Let's say I want price to come back to this candle in a form of a retracement. So I'm I'm going to set up this GAM box and I'm going to make that GAM box the, at the very bottom of that candle, the very height of that candle. And I might be looking for a discount price when price reaches into this. So what I might do is I might set my position tool like this, Right, the GAN tool is is basically a fib tool. It mapped out fifty percent of that candle for me by this middle line. I'm looking for a discount price to get in a trade, so fifty percent. Everyone likes fifty percent off. That's where I'm gonna I'm looking to enter. Um, it just helps me map out where where certain levels are. So I have my GAN box to set up to show me where fifty percent is of wherever it is. So. You know, it doesn't matter how big or small I make this GAM box. It's always going to map out 50%, right? So that's a pretty handy tool. We'll go in depth later on how I use that. This is the curve tool. 
Um, I use this to map out swing highs and swing lows, weak lows, strong lows, weak highs, strong highs, stuff like that. Or um, here lately, I've been using it for whenever liquidity sweeps uh, price. I'll put that where the sweep took place and that's how I know, okay, that was a sweep. I'm probably looking for an entry real soon. Um, those, those are the tools that I use and, and there's so many more tools here. You know, I could have, um, a bunch of drawings. I'm just going to put a bunch of polka dots on here and let's say I wanted to hide all my drawings, this I button here, I click on it. They all disappear. That's pretty neat, um, especially if you got your chart all cluttered up with, with different stuff and you just want to see a bare chart, you can click that real easy. If you wanted to lock all your your drawings and didn't want them to get messed with, you can close this padlock and then now it's um, now no one can mess with it or you can't accidentally move any, um, any of that stuff, um, stuff like that. I'm going to go to my object tree and I'm going to get rid of all these drawings, so all those highlighters. This is what I was talking about. I can edit all the drawings on, on the chart with the object tree. Uh, object tree is pretty handy. Uh, go back to NAS. Oh, how about that? Oh, I'm highlighting a bunch of stuff here. I don't mean to do that. Let's go to my object tree, get rid of the highlighter, anchor to view app. We don't need it. Don't need this text. All right. Well, interesting. So we're waiting for a retracement, right? There's this, this high, there's this low. I knew price was going to retrace. Um, it retraced the 786. It reacted perfectly off of the 786. And then what it did is it, it, um, I just changed the, inter the interval. Oh, I went to GJ. <clears throat> I accidentally hit the space bar and it, and it shuffled to the next chart. Anyway, back to NAS, the NASDAQ on the one minute chart. Um, yeah. Price reacted off the 786, and then it broke structure and a continuation. Um, trend line right here. A break of structure. After a break of structure, so after this, I'm waiting for another retracement. I'm guessing it's probably going to uh, reject off this range right here. So we'll see what it does. Um, this is playing out beautifully. I could have gotten in. Um, I could have gotten in at this point. Uh, more than likely right here. That would have been a good confirmation. Put my stop 11 points. I could target the bottom of that zero, the bottom of the Fibonacci. That could have been a one to two. Uh, trade easily so that, that, was, that would have been an easy two percent gain and then i could have been done for the day uh, but here i'm i'm talking to you guys so uh i hope what you're you're getting from this is trading view is very very limitless and what you can do it's amazing tool um oh i never got into the indicators a lot of people put indicators on their chart um like I've got the an exponential moving average right here. I've got a moving average, it's the 50. Um, if I wanted to put another indicator on there, let's just put moving average. Uh, put a moving average on there. You see it got added up here. Um, let's say, oh, there it is. That's probably like a nine, nine moving average. Let's see. Yeah, that's a pretty standard one. So I can change the input to nine. Let's say I want to go to 25, half of 50. And it changed. This is a smooth, smooth moving average. So um, a lot of people use moving averages. 
I mean, you can use all kinds of indicators. Just click on the indicator. You can search, go through. These are all the ones I've used in the past, favorited. I'll be honest with you, I don't use 98% of them um, anymore. I just use a, a moving average. And all that gives me is an idea of what side the market's on. Is it a is it on a bullish run? Is it on a bearish run? It, but I don't necessarily use the moving average as a as the gospel. You know, uh, it's just a quick reference for me. Um, I've got the DR and IDR indicator on here, and that's just because I'm lazy and I don't feel like mapping out the opening, the hour opening of every market on my own. Uh, that does it for me. So it's just a, a mapping tool. It's not really an indicator that gives me a buy or sell signal. I don't use indicators for that. Uh, some people do, but uh, there's thousands and thousands and thousands of different addict indicators that you can add um, to your chart. There's oscillators, like the ultimate oscillator. This is a good tool for if you want to detect divergences. Um, divergences with price action, like here's a divergence right off the bat. Let's see here from um, here to here. It's pretty flat on the oscillator, but if you come here to here, it's pretty extreme. Um, this was a hint. This was the oscillator telling you, hey, something's not adding up. Two plus two does not equal four here. You know why are, it's mapping out a flat, flat peaks, uh, like a flat trend, but price action is doing something completely different. Oh, wait, this is a bearish divergence. Guess what happened? Price went on a run to the bearish side. Um, oscillators can be very handy, uh, especially um, if you know how to use them, right? So, and, and that's the thing. Uh, these are tools. And it's our responsibility to be able to know how to use the tool correctly. So uh, with TradingView, a quick Google, um, a quick YouTube search on an indicator or a tool on TradingView, you'll find all the information you need. Um, this is an awesome program. I use it every day, and it's amazing what you can do. Uh, you're, you're using this to look at the charts, to see where the market is at, and... Um, and then having a good understanding of how to use this program, um, your trading is going to go to a, a higher level. You know, it's going to go to that next level. The more familiar and the more competent you become with trading view. So, uh, I'm going to stop right there. This video is long enough. I knew the trading view video was going to be super long. If there's anything that didn't make sense or wasn't clear enough to you guys, uh, put it in the comment section below, ask your questions, statements. Um, I know I'm not the best presenter of information. I get scatterbrained and like I was, I was trying to possibly catch a trade in London session before I go to work. Um, I would have gotten into, but if it wasn't for the meddling kids, no, I, I, I really hope you guys are enjoying this content. And I hope this is helpful, right? That's the whole goal is to, is to take uh, somebody that has no idea how to trade, has no uh, understanding or background in any of this and, you know, help you guys get started in a sense. So uh, like I said, any questions, comments, suggestions, put them in the comments below. I will read them. Uh, I appreciate everything. Make sure you hit the likes, um, the like, subscribe, the YouTube algorithm stuff. Just help me out. You know, I, I appreciate it. And um, thanks, everybody. The next video I'm going to try to uh, get up pretty soon is to go over how to use MetaTrader on your phone or, or desktop. All right. So until next time, thanks, everybody. See you later.